when I've talked to Bitcoiners about plant medicines and ayahuasca, I have just received nothing but, oh wow, I want to know more, just like you. <laughs> it's been the, pretty much the typical response of most Bitcoiners I talk to, and also a lot of Bitcoiners that have experienced it as well. So I know that a lot of folks have been out to the jungle, have, a lot of folks have participated with psilocybin, both in ceremonies, but also personally as well. Um, so I, I think that's very common in the Bitcoin uh, community. And I think because Bitcoin makes you question everything you ever thought about money and then start questioning everything you thought about everything, yeah. but eventually it gets to this question about, oh, what am I? <laughs> what is looking outside of my eyeballs? As my friend Chris Douglas says, <laughs> what is that? What is that looking out? Like not actually my idea of myself, but what is actually experience in this realm? And how can I find out more about it? And you can do it many different ways. You can do meditation, you can do, you know, uh, yogic practices. There's a lo lot of ways that you can get to higher consciousness. I would just say that plant medicines offer one of the fastest ways to have a deeper experience. So yeah. there's that. Yeah. And like I said, with the right person. So, you know, it's it a shortcut in time, but it's not a shortcut in terms of work. Exactly. That the Thank proof you. of work within it is still the same required. So whether you sit with meditation and you're trying to get over some things or learn something about it, it's going to take a certain amount of time. This will take a shorter period of time, but the intensity of the time may be higher than through meditation so that you'd actually have to, and I'm not busting on meditation at all. I think it's course, phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying this is a way that you can... <laughs> If you're uncomfortable with yourself, then maybe the best thing you do is get really, really intensely uncomfortable with yourself to see what that uncomfortableness is yes. all about. Yes. And then examine that, put awareness towards it, and then shift your way of being because of that. Yeah. All right. 11 minutes late, but hey, uh, I'm yeah, so yeah. glad I got Tom Tabor now. <laughs> On my Zoom call, uh, well, uh, Tom, um, thank you so much for your time and welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity of reaching out to me. Um, well, my pleasure. Um, Tom, I mean, uh, it's, it's you know, the, the moment I, you know, read a little bit about you, I mean, I've been following just, you know, quite recently, to be honest with you, right? But uh, the moment I read like plant medicine and Bitcoin and a Bitcoiner on plant medicine, like, this is my guy, this is my friend, you know? Awesome. <laughs> These well, are my so wavelengths, cool. okay. So Tom, I mean, um, you know, I checked you out, you know, on Noster, um, you know, for people who don't know this, like the decentralized version of X or Twitter. <laughs> and mm -hmm. on you got a page also on Facebook. Why don't you just please introduce yourself? Like what's your, like maybe in a, you know, in a nutshell, what's your journey to Bitcoin and plant medicine? What's the connection? How do you connect those? And, and yeah, just, just tell me about yourself, please. I think, the, well, the connection for me is they're the two most important things in my life. So, <laughs> and I think that they are actually self-reinforcing. But as far as my story goes, um, I first learned about Bitcoin when I had some friends that were mining it back in like 2011. And I learned a little bit about it then, but I didn't learn how to buy any. And it was really heartbreaking for me when I saw the price was like $11 of Bitcoin, didn't buy any. And then I felt bad about it for like 10 years and said, I'm too late, I'm too late. And every moment it gets to it, not thinking, maybe now's the right time to get in. <laughs> And it wasn't until uh, until I dated a woman about four years ago, and she said, Tom, just let go of all that and just look at Bitcoin again and study it. And I was like, okay, and I did. And I got into that. I got into shit coins. I climbed Mount Stupid, as Alex Danzig calls it, for about nine months. And then I figured Enjoy. out, oh, Michael, Michael Saylor was right. <laughs> it's not just because he's a billionaire that actually should hold in Bitcoin only. And so... I got to be a, a maxi then. It was actually right before going to the Unconfiscatable conference. It was my first Bitcoin conference. And I knew that Alex Svetsky would be there. And I knew that if I came up and said that I held any Ethereum or anything horrible like that, I would feel bad inside. And that was kind of the leverage I needed to say, okay, it's time to be a maxi. And then that conference really sealed it for me. And it's been amazing. Uh, the plant medicine journey is a few years. Well, it was... I don't know, maybe my first experience was about 15 years ago with some ayahuasca in a men's group uh, in Colorado. And I had a chance for one journey with that. And I'll explain more about what that is as we go. 
But then it was about 10 years later, I was invited to a ceremony and that radically changed my life. It was just this letting go of all this angst I'd had from childhood, um, recent traumas, and just letting a, at least a good chunk of it go in the first weekend of two ceremonies. And that was stunning. And I said, well, whatever I'm doing now, I'm giving that up. I'm going to dedicate my life to learning more about these and helping other people find them. So that's what I've been doing for about six years now. Oh, my, I, this is a fascinating journey because, I mean, I mean, I don't have to tell you, I mean, when you are uh, on a psychedelic journey, right? I mean, it's a plant medicine, right? And uh, I've never done, I've never experienced, uh, nor has my wife, um, DMT or ayahuasca. Is it pronounced for ayahuasca or ayahuasca? <laughs> I would never get it. <laughs> it's sometimes pronounced either way, but most commonly uh -huh. ayahuasca. Because my wife always tries to correct me. So I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> for you, it's like ayahuasca. All right. <laughs> So, you know, and you get like, uh, if you don't, if you have never, right, if you've never experienced it, it you can't just explain to somebody because it's a reality, re more real as, you know, a lot of, you know, prominent people within the psychedelic community say it's more real than reality or, you know, or whatever they, however they articulate it. So um, I find this, this, this fusion, this, this uh, amalgamation, or I don't know what we call it, this connection of, of the fields of, you know the potential of bitcoin and 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 psychedelic i mean it's a, i'm not trying to do this like in a compartmentalized you know fashion okay. like bitcoin and but but it's the potential for a you know a world a planet a, a civilization a humanity an ethos or whatever a peace uh evolution whatever we can achieve uh through bitcoin and that you know with the total transformation of consciousness of thinking of emotions of soul of because i've you know i've dealt uh, you know i've researched a lot about you know the essence of creation the essence of science uh, magnetic gravitational fields so uh, is there has there been any moment uh, i know i'm going pretty much into the midst of this whole discussion but okay. maybe if you could just go you know you can go back as far as you can but uh, is there was there any time of a uh, moment where you said like okay this is it okay this is where we can achieve like uh, an equilibrium uh, I don't know where we can get like a majority of humanity I mean we don't need you know as I always say we don't need like eight billion people we all all what we need is like a tipping point a critical mass of people um, going through different fields of you know consciousness and 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 and. Uh, and comprehension like holistic comprehension is there any like moment where you're like okay this is this is the connection now okay where we can accelerate this process or whatever yeah yeah uh, well hmm, there's a couple ways to go at that <laughs> i think one of them is is this well in bitcoin your, your viewers are going to know bitcoin more than plant medicines and i i believe truly that bitcoin is a revolutionary technology that's going to transform our whole civilization on this planet that when we change the incentives of the games that humans are playing and we ch change from a short-term cheap and easy way of living to a long-term what really matters that that is going to revolutionize perhaps over generations but hopefully we see something in our lifetimes that we actually see a radical change away from um a, a, war, <laughs> a society that just gives participation awards rather than actual trophies for true proof of work, you've actually done the thing. And so we see this world now that there's a lot of participation awards going around for just somebody being in the game instead of actually excelling at the game. And see, Bitcoin is actually that thing that will change the way that we think and do everything. As we, as if that future is gonna actually unfold, it will be an economic revolution, but I believe it also has to be a spiritual revolution too. And not picky about what spiritual path you wish to take because there's, I think if you're following something that is truly from the heart, it's all going to go to the, a similar place that we need to have an, a spiritual awakening. And you mentioned consciousness. <laughs> One thing that my friend Chris Douglas says, he says, we don't have consciousness. Consciousness has us. And what we're really doing is not trying to increase our consciousness. We're trying to actually clear the field between us and consciousness so we can experience it more fully. And I would say in the case of ayahuasca, that's very much what's happening. You, you said it's like reality, but more real than reality. I would say it's a higher state of consciousness or connection to consciousness that you sense. And you're in a place where, oh, I'm actually truly myself without my masks, without my identity, without my thoughts about myself. I'm just breathing as a living human on this 
planet that's whirling around a sun, whirling around a galaxy and whirling through infinity. It's like, whoa, okay, that actually is real. And it's hard to remember that. That can just be like, oh, that's a sci-fi movie. Oh, actually, we're living a sci-fi movie that is rather profound and quite a gift. Let me let me uh, ask you just uh, because I think for for audience or followers or whoever is listening here, um, uh, the preconditions for going on a journey like on a real deep like ayahuasca or it could be even like sil psilocybin or you know uh, <laughs> like a real you know a spiritual uh, you know I mean the pre break because there's a like a, a sort of opinions or some people have had experiences but now beside the set and the setting would you say that you know, the maturity, the age, the wisdom, the, the you know, how do you feel? I mean, uh, is there, are there any factors or conditions or parameters that you would say, you know, you should check those yes. out before you, you know? Yes. I would say if you're ever involved in these plant medicine, psilocybin or ayahuasca, well, particularly in ayahuasca, that you need to have a plant medicine person, a very experienced medicine man, medicine woman that has years of experience that has years of understanding, training in the jungle. Those are the people you want to get. And people that aren't just trying to make a quick buck. Uh, and that's both in America, South America as well. Like check out who you're sitting with. That's, I would say that's of utmost importance. Um, and their experience and, and people that have sat with them. So just knowing that the set and setting is important. And I guess another thing that people often go into a ceremony going, okay, well, here's my goals of what I'm going to achieve. I'm going to figure out if this is the right career for me, if this is the right partner for me or something, or I'm going to get rid of this childhood thing. It's like, actually, you probably have no control at all. All I do is I go in with an open heart and say, show me what I need to see, help me heal and just get greater energetic presence and well-being within my body. And whatever happens, I'm happy for the journey. I'm here to, here to surrender and accept. Very interesting. You know, I met, um, I have um, a Persian or because I'm originally from Iran, from Persia, and I oh, had a, a very good, you know, sh she friend, you know, she's like actually much older than me. And uh, I remember, her, you know, seeing her like uh, last time on a wedding, right in front in France, she, you know, she invited all of us. So, so anyway, so uh, she, uh, that's what she told me. She said she bought, uh, she purchased, she's a doctor, uh, she's a doctor, she's a dentist. Uh, and she said she many many years ago she went to uh, Peru and bought like a village, uh, or not a village, but like a, a a property or something like that, and turned it. I don't know now legally with it. She you know had to turn it into a into some kind of you know legal construct or whatever. But she gave it away as a charity, or, uh, you know something like a you know for the shamans, curanderos, that tribe, the indigenous tribe. So you can hey you know what this is yours, okay. Wow. Uh, yeah amazing Ama i mean am amazing woman the, the moment i mean she's like a sister to me you know the moment i met her you know it's like meeting you is like i mean i haven't met you in person but you know it's like a total flow of you know information and 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 god you know so much ethos and peace and and you know the same principles it's 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 amazing so and and but the only thing said you know i would love you know to come back always you know on a regular basis back to you and uh, you know to the shamans or Kranderos and and she told me she had like like I don't know in total that was the last time she would talk like uh, 60 or 65 um uh, you know uh, ayahuasca uh, ceremonies <laughs> so okay, wow. like, oh my god really <laughs> now does I mean uh, I know that you have you need to take your time right you have it's not like a, you know it's not like a weekend trip like you, you really need to go into deep into yourself you need to take time maybe even the best thing I think would be like what a few weeks maybe one or two months the longer the better and is it like each time like deeper more intense more you know multi-dimensional or, or how could you how would you describe that I think in terms of preparation for ceremony you can take it very seriously or not so seriously and I've had people I've seen people do both I've done both as well uh, where I've actually spent a long time preparing and, and having the right diet. And that's what's recommended. There's a specific diet for ayahuasca that is an elimination diet, basically getting to very simple, plain, natural foods, not fried, no fermented things, things like this. And you can take that very seriously. Or if in America, Americans are just going to be Americans. And, <laughs> and so they'll do what they do. And, and if you take it more seriously, you typically have a more profound experience. Um, when we go to the jungle, for instance, we're eating the food they serve us, and it's very simple rice, potatoes, lentil beans, oatmeal that with no sugar, no salt. And when we are there, just the jungle itself is so much more powerful. And 
we uh you go pretty deep when you do all the prep and then taking care of yourself afterwards as well is great but if you don't you still have an effect you still have a great effect so i don't i don't know prepping is good but it's not mandatory and uh you'll have an experience either way in terms of like the progression of what experiences are like i would say the early early ceremonies are getting at your root traumas or your root things that are just dis causing dis-ease within you, causing that uh, not feeling whole, feeling all the things that the society does to us, anxiety, depression, jealousy, fearfulness, greed, all these lower level human things. It's like, hey, you're doing this, why? You're having this sensation within your body, why? Let's get to the root of it. And that's often stored in your body as an energetic configuration. So in the bottom pit of your stomach, you feel something. In your chest, it's really tight. Uh, you have trouble speaking for yourself, speaking out. So with these places where you have stuck energy, it's going to go there and it's going gonna, it's gonna to do work on it. And you may have visuals, you may not. Um, doesn't matter either way. You're having it, you're surrendering to it. And then uh, all the, the master plant medicines are typically purgatory, purgatives. So it can grab that energetic configuration and you can purge that into a bucket as vomit, but it's not like drinking too much beer and puking in a toilet. It's more about this deeper soul-like thing that's coming out and it's getting out of your body. You can also purge with tears. You can purge by sitting on the toilet as well. Sometimes all three at once. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, <laughs> but it's but it's like, like very individual, right? I mean, because I heard from uh, from a uh, you know from a friend of mine, she, uh, she said that um, uh, she didn't have to puke, uh, you know, funnily. She was in Peru, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. deep, you know, Ayahuasca, but she didn't have to puke or anything. She didn't have like no physical. It's it's very it's fascinating, you know. Some people are like, mo I think most people probably, you know, puke or have diarrhea, whatever, you know, like go to the toilet or. <laughs> But some people, you know, don't. Uh, so it's it depends, I guess, you know, what's your nutrition like? What's your, you know, physical st stages like, right? So a lot of factors it, play into this, it right? Can be a lot of factors. It can also be the strength of the ayahuasca you're taking as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, some folks will actually water it down and it won't be as potent. So there's that potential. Another place that can block it is your pineal gland. So the yeah. third eye that we have it can actually become calcified over time through a lifetime of behaviors and diet and that sort of thing. And it may be hard to break through that. So actually decalcifying the pineal gland is like the first step. And that may take some ceremonies without, uh, without any purging whatsoever. So I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, but every experience is completely different. That's why I say I just surrender to it because sometimes it may be just a beautiful, glorious visual evening or it could be a really dark night where you're really going through the stuff. And the dark nights, those are my favorite, the ones that are hard, because you learn the most in them. You're the you're actually getting the most information about what you can change to make your life better. So Wow. And typically after that purge is when this glorious sort of connection to the universe opens up. It's like removing that thing that's keeping you from that connection to greater consciousness is getting removed so that you can then experience that in a more full and, and real way. And it's not a mental thing, I would say, also. So some of the things you've described are like thinking about it and what are the mental constructs of it. And it's not that. It's all within the body. It's all vibrations within the body. And that's what we are. The whole universe is made of vibrations. And so we're just one configuration of those vibrations. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, um, I think it's a good start. Like when we uh, like talk about this, like there's a spectrum of light like th that we see, like it's very like ridiculously very narrow, narrow yeah. like what we see yeah. like in our sober or more or less sober or whatever, <laughs> even on dry on, on, on all these normal, socially normal accepted drugs, drugs, you know, like, yeah. um, so um, could it be that, um, because I always said, you know, let's just call it DMT or whatever, that is the essence of it, you know, uh, now, first of all, first of all, I mean, this is what I find fascinating because, you know, ayahuasca, this this thing that they, they put like, I mean, how did they find out, what is it, hundreds or thousands of years ago that they were they were able, the curanderos or shamans going to the jungle, you know, it's sort of a purging, I don't know, like a, like a mental and soul purging. And, and then they, how did they find out that they have to mixture, like combine what is it two or three plants together i mean is that i mean that alone that fact alone is that it's so fascinating 
It is. Do they talk? Can... Do they communicate with the plants? Or how do you? Did... Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's okay. I can I can tell you. Uh, there's a number of stories about the origin of ayahuasca, and it was perhaps at least five thousand years ago, possibly ten or more as well. Um, and it's two plants. Uh, one is a vine called Banisteria capai, and it's often called the ayahuasca vine or the vine of death, actually, which is not a poisonous vine. It's a vine that kills the ego. So it's an ego killing, the e ego death, uh, which ties into Bitcoin with ego death capital, by the way. <laughs> oh, are you familiar with that? Are you familiar? Yeah, you must Bruce, know Jeff uh, was pretty well, I guess, yeah? And, and Lynn Alden, I believe a few others. I love this guy, yeah. Okay. So there's a connection. But this ego of death, it's this, va this vine that grows in the jungle, and then a leafy kind of bushy plant called, uh, called Shakruna. And the leaves of this Shakruna plant are the highest concentration of DMT, dimethyltryptamine, in the world, which is also called the spirit molecule, the molecule that gets us in direct communication with the thing that is making us. But if you just eat those DMT leaves, they'll go into your stomach and the enzymes in your stomach will break them down and they'll never enter your brain. It's part of your body's system. Protect your brain from chemicals it's not sure about. So it's, it can't pass the blood brain barrier. The only way that you can actually ingest DMT and have it go to your brain is if you also combine it with an MAOI, a medical term for monoamine oxidized inhibitor. It turns out the ayahuasca vine or the Banisteria capai is a high concentration of MAOIs. And even to this day, with all of our scientific research, this is still the only way that you can ingest DMT and actually have it take effect. So how did they figure out that this vine and this leafy bush that don't grow near each other, it's not like they were right under each other and said, well, we'll just put them together. It was actually the first plant medicine, which is mapacho, which is, plant, which is tobacco. So it's wild tobacco that grows in the jungle and they would smoke it. They also use it as a shamanic snuff. And, uh, but the smoking in Pachos, what every curandero, every uh, medicine man, every ayahuasquero will use <clears throat> for protection in a ceremony. And it was by smoking Mapacho, the spirit of Mapacho told them, take this vine and take this leaf, bash this vine into shreds, put the leaves into a big pot, maybe like a 50 liter pot, and boil it down over three days, adding more water, getting it more and more concentrated to, or just with like a liter or two of ayahuasca from this huge pot of leaves and vine. And then that is the medicine that puts you in touch with that thing that is making you, I, I would say, a portal to mother nature, a direct experience of mother nature herself. Well, this, and, is, this is amazing. This is amazing because you know why? Because um, I, 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 you know, I investigate and researched um, my, uh, you know, my for my PhD. You know, I, I studied law, but but there was a topic that I got to totally deep into the rabbit hole of. It's about you know liability of the cigarette corporations, tobacco industry for many years. And I investigated and researched the internal once internal documents of tobacco. So anyway, I, I just don't want to you know talk about this anymore. But I went deep into the rabbit hole of tobacco. So is this, my question is, is the original like wild jungle, whatever tobacco, does it contain like a, like a, even a, maybe a slightly psychedelic substance called harmaline or something like that? It might, you know, also oh. induce some um, kind of. I'm not sure if Mapacho has harmaline in it. I had to look that up, but it does induce uh, a slightly, slightly psychiatric experience. So I spent uh, a month in the jungle by myself in a hut uh, it's called dieta. And so they would bring me food three times a day, just rice and potatoes three times a day. And you just sit and you'll sit with a plant medicine that's not psychoactive necessarily. It's uh, working on some system in the body, maybe the heart, the liver, the nervous system, um, any sort of things like that. So there's a lot of different plants they have for targeting that. But as you're taking this, I'm also smoking mapachos. And when I would take the medicine in the morning, smoke a mapacho, I just look at the leaves in the, in the forest and they would just start fluttering and kind of just do sign, sort of a, a shimmering across them. And so there's that sort of effect that can happen with it, but I'm not sure about the harmaline, but in the ayahuasca vine, the harmaline, so it's an MAOI, but it's also contains harmaline and some other compounds, which are deeply healing. They would say the, the spirit of ayahuasca is a feminine spirit, an actual spirit in another plane. And that she comes through the harmaline and those other compounds in the vine. That that's that's her uh, way to communicate with us as humans. It's nature directly communicating with humans. 
this is getting better and better. Uh, so, <laughs> Tom, um, can you like, um, I mean, if you want to share uh, your personal or, or you know your own uh, whatever on a soul level, on a, I mean, I, like before and after all those yeah. years you've been doing this, is there like a transformation you can maybe share with uh, me and our uh, audience? Yeah, thanks for the good, great questions. <laughs> Yeah, I think when I came to that first ceremony where it really changed my life, I was going in there pretty feeling mentally unstable, feeling like I needed a psychiatrist or somebody I had to go to to kind of sort out what was going on inside of me. I had some misgivings about my behavior, about my unease of the world, my just a lot of negative things coming in that I didn't know where they were coming from. And in that first ceremony, and I also went in as a complete atheist, <laughs> a life coach, <coughs> and uh, just kind of coming off some years of some debaucherous lifestyle as well. So I'd, I'd come out of that for about three years of that. I'd been done two years of healing, but it wasn't healed all the way, I guess. I had some things that still need to come through. And so in that first ceremony, I saw a dark entity in my mind or in my space kind of down and to the right of me behind me and and a little bit it came out through a purge that night but i was like i, I talked to people running i said what is what is that what is going on i said well that's that's normal and maybe more tonight and the second night it was this profound experience where this huge energetic alligator it felt like a black alligator i just puked it like a three-foot alligator into the bucket i just visually saw it come out of me and it was this what I now know is like sex demons. And it was something that had been implanted as an early child seeing a, a porno magazine when I was like 11 years old or something. And it just kind of infiltrated into me and it had been there for a long, long time. And I'd acted on it in some ways in my life. And I was ready to be done with it. And it came out and I was like, holy shit, get the fuck away from me. I can't, I don't know if I can cuss on your thing, but I apologize. If you're so... oh, please, <laughs> like, authentic. <laughs> okay. oh That's what it was like. I pushed the back and I said, like, get the F away from me because I couldn't believe it. And then for the first time I could breathe as I could breathe as a child again. So when I took in air, I could take it in fully into my lungs. Um, from that point, I was giddy for about two months just because I felt this new sense of freedom that I had never experienced. And I went on to, you know, get involved with ayahuasca, have many, many more ceremonies, purge many, many more times. And what I found is that the best parts of me remained and those parts of me that didn't serve me well or didn't serve others, those are the things that I kept getting shown, but it wasn't fixing them for me it was pulling that energetic configuration out and said okay now if you want to live from this place you've got to keep them out and the only way to keep those out are with your actions and your behaviors so your behaviors not just your actions outside the world but your behaviors within the skull here too so how are you living your life are you living your life as a fantasy and you're just a player in a video game or are you actually experiencing the true life that's around us are we breaking that that barrier between the thoughts about life and actually living life. So, uh, and then so from that place forward, I've been to the jungle many times. I've done two month long dietas. I've sat with a number of curanderos and had many, many profound experiences. Um, I'm a much calmer person now, less anxious, kinder, gentler. Um, I live my life without agenda as best as I can. I always am watching that behavior, you know, like are we trying to seek advantage here? Look, let's not do that. Let's actually just be authentic and everything, whether that's kind and friendly or not, or maybe I'm really down and depressed some days. So, so be it, go through it, live life. This is our once in a lifetime, our only chance to live life. Let's do it as best as we can. Well, thank you for sharing this. Tom. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, because you know it's it's a very in intimate thing I think you know to talk about, but because it's on a you know on a very you know <laughs> higher much much higher level or deeper level. Um, let me ask you before I forget that question because you know I've, I've read a lot and and you know seen many documentaries or report testimonies of this and that, but I want to ask you like, is it true that a lot of people, not many, but not all of them, but but a lot of people went you know, on, a, on those kind of, you know, I watched the journeys and they came back and that's some, like, even up to life-threatening, you know, I would call them life-threatening diseases, you know, whether it be tumor, cancer or anything, any kind of, you know, oh, yeah. 
these balances. Have you like had have had like personal encounters or uh, observations with people who would say like, hey, yeah. wow, you know, it's like reverse everything? Or... Yeah, in addition, uh, I guess I, I've sat in a lot of ceremonies, but I've also uh, had the honor of actually being a helper in a lot of ceremonies as well. And so I can actually be the person that's as things are going on and the medicine man is, is doing the ceremony, I can help somebody if they have difficulties and need help going to the bathroom, something like that. And in one ceremony, we, we had a woman who had stage four cancer and she was there with her husband. She was in her late 50s and um, and and she was hoping that maybe ayahuasca would help her with it. I didn't really think that it would, but I knew that it would help her see something on the other side. So as she transitions out of this physical body into what's beyond that, she'd have some semblance of us and be less afraid in that and have more knowledge. And so she said, I think twice, but, and then she did pass away maybe six months later, but her husband reported, he says, you know, for me, it was the most, it was the greatest gift because we got closer and I came to peace with her passing before she passed. So it was a big deal for that. So will it, will it, I, 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 I don't want to say there's any medical benefits, mm -hmm. but if you have radical shifts in your way that you're living life, that those can lead to medical benefits. So, you know. Yeah, I was imagining, I mean, like when you, you know, have this, ama you know, amazingly, you know, ex uh, you know, real, uh, you know, uh, grand eras like shamans who might, you know, combine this with other, you know, I mean, they have a vast knowledge, right? About plants and their effects. Like if you combine them, maybe, you know, but I, mean, I don't know, I'm just speculating, could be maybe an avenue, you know, for <laughs> a truly so-called alternative, you know, the true, you know, origin of, of healing, you know, and not this, you know, artificially created, you know, Rockefeller <laughs> allopath, yes. you know, yes. pharmaceutical, you know, system, I mean, yeah. satanic shit that is going on, so... <laughs> Yeah, I have, I, I guess in that vein, I have another really dear friend and he's uh, has a number of medical issues he's trying to help through plant medicines and ayahuasca is one of them, but many other things. And he's, he's trying to be the first person to cure type one diabetes within himself. Nice. And it's been a long, a long path. Um, and, and it, that's just one of a number of things. So he's really trying to set himself as an example to, to really change. And my gosh, I hope he succeeds because I want to be the friend to the end of my my life. So, yeah. Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm right now. I'm thinking, hey, we we should we should you know. I mean, hopefully, you know, we get a time because you know we have a we have a daughter. She's like three and a half years old. It's like totally different. You know, when you have a child, everything changes, everything. But it's such a beautiful experience, of course, and 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 most you know humbling and uh, experience. To, uh, but hopefully, you know, when we have the right time, you know, to, um, to you know, get together or, or go on this journey, uh, but I guess, you know, we have to wait until, you know, we have the right site, set and setting and the time and the, you know, the free space. Um, now, I'm trying kind of now to cross the bridge or transition to, to bit, uh, not to well, necessarily to Bitcoin, but have you like had uh, like, like you must have like, you know, going through all these, you know, to these conferences or meeting people or whatever, uh, who you know deep are also like you and me you know deep into bitcoin like do, is there any like um is i mean other people like that are blocking it or you know these kind of conversations or other or have you met people are like totally open minded it's like hey uh you know maybe even influential people you know who could truly you know uh create maybe the infrastructure to accelerate you know the you know or, or what do you call it like facilitate for people to go into this journey if they are ready if they're mature ripe in the set and setting and you know and and maybe uh converge on a i don't know i'm i'm, I'm going out of words but do you know what i'm saying like uh i, think I, do. I can, yeah, okay, I, can go ahead. I may not i may not hit it exactly but let's see uh when i've talked to bitcoiners about plant medicines and ayahuasca i have just received nothing but oh wow i want to know more just like you it's been the, pretty much the typical response of most Bitcoiners I talk to, and also a lot of Bitcoiners that have experienced it as well. So I know that a lot of folks have been out to the jungle, Have a lot of folks have participated with psilocybin, both in ceremonies, but also personally as well. Um, so I, I think that's very common in the Bitcoin uh, community. And I think because Bitcoin makes you question everything you ever thought about money and then start questioning everything you thought about everything, yeah. that eventually it gets to this question about, oh, what am I? 
what is looking outside of my eyeballs as my friend Chris Douglas says what is that what is that looking out like not actually my idea of myself but what is actually experiencing this realm and how can I find out more about it and you can do it many different ways you can do meditation you can do you know uh, yogic practices there's a lo lot of ways that you can get to higher consciousness I would just say that plant medicines offer one of the fastest ways to have a deeper experience so yeah. There's that. Yeah. And like I said, with the right person. So, you know, that exactly, the people yeah. Do it. yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not I, I would never try like to hammer it to someone like do, you know, a psychedelic experience. I was like, yeah. hey, if it doesn't, you know, maybe it's something else. Maybe yeah. I don't know. As you said, maybe I mean I'm not a fan of meditation. I tried everything really, but as you say, you know, what what, what would you call it? Like a shortcut or like a you know, a shortcut to a portal, to a door that you can just you know, like open it or close it or whatever, go to another portal, to another door. Is that like sort of... Uh, it's it a shortcut in time, but it's not a shortcut in terms of work. Exactly. The, the proof you. of work within it is still the same required. So whether you sit with meditation and you're trying to get over some things or learn something about it, it's going to take a certain amount of time. This will take a shorter period of time, but the intensity of the time may be higher than through meditation so that you'd actually have to, and I'm not busting on meditation at all. I think it's course, phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, this is a way that you can, <laughs> if you're uncomfortable with yourself, then maybe the best thing you do is get really, really intensely uncomfortable with yourself to see what that uncomfortableness is yes. all about. Yes. And then examine that, put awareness towards it, and then shift your way of being because of that. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I don't have to tell you, we live in a, in a, in a fucked up crazy world right now, right? I mean, I mean, it's getting, I mean, of course, we, we've been living this thing like, like well, I don't know, the last hundred years, which, you know, we have been systematically stolen, not only on a monetary economy, but like on a technological level, which I would love to hear your opinion about, because, you know, I've had talks with Ashton Forbes and Mike Harrison. It's, 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 everything is here. And, and, you know, and when you talk, when you listen to all these, uh, you know, Bitcoin OGs or, you know, all these brilliant minds, will it be, it's like, um, I have this feeling there's something missing that's like highly intelligent, highly, why highly super intelligent and beyond comprehension. You know, you've got all these people like talking, like I have this, I mean, my humble perception, you know, it's like very compartmentalized discussions, debates going on. And sometimes I'm like, you know, and I have had like private talks and with Daniel Prince, as you might have known, you know, he's um, on some levels like much, much further, right? He questions a lot more than the average, let's say, Bitcoiner. Now, you know, I mean, I'm trying now to transition to a topic now. It's it's a little bit sensitive, like uh, existential, spiritual, uh, psychological, uh, and of course, existential in terms of uh, really uh, as a humanity, as a human civilization. And, you know, and when we're talking about like the reality, like, you know, we are, you know, sort of in a speck of a dust, right? On this planet Earth, <laughs> we are in, you know, <laughs> in a speck of a dust in a, in a tiny little, so one of many, many, many solar systems within this galaxy. And the fact is, the reality is, if, if I don't know if you've ever been, you know, uh, you know, researching this or following Ben Davidson, you know, he's one of the best. Mm -hmm. Right, sun, weatherman, or suspicious observers, the magnetic field of your Earth is oh, has been I've actually, I actually yeah. know, I've actually heard him talk before. Actually, thank yes. you. Okay, he's a good friend of, uh, or he's a, he's a, my friend Chris has really followed him for years, and I got to meet him just a few months ago. No actually. way. Where did you meet yeah. him? In Colorado, I guess. Yeah. In Colorado, he's not, he's not far from Colorado Springs. So yeah, he had an event, and we went to his event, a luncheon event, actually. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> and David, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is he like? I mean, I, I would love to meet this. Guy. I mean, is he, is he, is he's, he? He's just completing. Uh, him and his wife are just completing a center close to Colorado mm -hmm. Springs, and they're going to start holding events there. So I don't know what the nature of all of them be but yeah stay tuned to him and he'll, he'll give you more information oh my god this is fascinating so anyway so i also talked about because i also talked with i don't know whether you're familiar with dave column he's he's not a bitcoiner but you probably heard him in different podcasts even marty bent or you know he's he's like a super like a super brain i think he's a chemical professor like chemistry professor but he's like a vast knowledge of you know would it be you know finance geopolitics macroeconomics he goes into different rabbit holes ta sacrosanct taboos you know but uh, so I think, I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, blow my own horn, but 
but I partially, at least, you know, I think I had planted a seed into his brain, into his heart and soul. And now I think it's come to fruition. And, I, and he's taking it seriously now, this topic. You know, the uh, the, the magnetic pole shift, the, the, the exponential. I don't know. I don't want to call it exponential. But if you have like five, I think it's 5% per decade uh, reduction of the magnetic field. That's sort of a protective layer, which protects us from all kinds of, you know, solar radiation, cosmic rays, everything. So it's coming. It, it's There's no way around. It's just, this is reality. And we've got to face this reality. But, uh, you know, and I know there are some other topics that Daniel Prince would love to, you know, talk to other Bitcoin. I was like, hey, okay. you know what? don't talk about this. You might get yourself, you know, you, you're losing your credibility or something like that. I'm like, Jesus, we're talking about like data, like, like facts, like evidence based, uh, you know, like yes. I mean, do you have any kind of approach to this, uh, yes. you know, like finally, uh, uh, you know, uh, per perceiving, understanding, absorbing, analyzing, comprehending the more holistic, you know, mm -hmm. reality around us. So <laughs> for, for me, I'm an annoyingly rationalist person that is that there's people in the spiritual world that are just can talk about all those things for a long time. And for me, it's very challenging to, because I just want to, I, I perceive real, I, 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 I want to hang on to this physical form universe that we have. Uh, geology is a place where I'm like, okay, I understand geology, but I'm open to new ideas too, but I respect science. And when you start talking about woo woo things, I want it to be true. Like I really want it to be true for myself. So I'm a hard, I'm the hardest sell that you'll come across in terms of spiritual stuff, which is great because with that, I'm skeptical of all things. And what ayahuasca has shown me is that there is a reality adjacent to our reality that we're not so aware of. And we kind of mentioned some of that before with the electromagnetic spectrum as well. But even in just waking life, there's different realities we can live in. The difference between those days where you just feel like abundantly joy, you're with your, your wife and your child and you're having just one of those magical days, that's reality. But then you have those days where it seems like the whole world turned against you and you're just defeated in a way. And that's yet a different reality. You say, well, that's just how I feel inside. But actually how you feel inside is generating your actual reality. Because in those darker times, those are the times when it's like, this is what I'm actually experiencing. So knowing that there's a wide variety, and we'll see it on our city streets, the people that are living homelessly, they're living a very different reality than us folks living in houses, you know? And it's it's really, really sad. And how can, how can we actually change that so that nobody in our society lives that reality? And I think that path is Bitcoin because the reason for that devastation is our whole fiat system, what radically changed, like how how has this clown world really risen so powerfully and so strong? We can look back to 1971, and as Bitcoiners, we know that's when the dollar was temporarily removed from the gold standard 54 years ago. Exactly. And it has only accelerated, and it's moving closer and closer to the hyperinflation of the US dollar because there's nothing they can do except print more. It's a matter of how fast they print it and for what reasons and what cover they give themselves to print more. So is it COVID? Is it the Ukrainian war? Is it the new war or new three wars they're dreaming up right now that are all going to be, these are the reasons we have to print more money. So Bitcoin re-incentivizes the world to be more honest, to be more fair, to be more abundant for all. Some will be more abundant than others, but all boats will be lifted through Bitcoin, a Bitcoin standard economy. And if that's not a spiritual awakening, I don't know what is, because changing the face of humanity on earth also changes earth itself as well. And as we do that, if we're just going to go out and buy Lambos with Bitcoin and we're just going to live a life of Vegas and cocaine and women and all this stuff, then we're not getting there. If we're actually going to go introspective and look at ourselves and see exactly what is going on within us and who we are. And with abundance, we have free time. What are you going to do with your free time? Are you just going to binge Netflix. If you have abundance, you have your place to live, you have all the money you need for the rest of your life. Are you just going to be a sloth or you can actually do something important in this world? Because if you don't have to make money for a living, then what you have to do is your highest purpose, exactly. your highest good. Your call, you have to use your talent in the best right. ways you can. 
And if you're still blocked by trauma within you, things within you that keep you from being your best self, then you'll need some path to get over that. And I think plant medicines in their many different forms can be one way of doing that. Okay. Wow. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there, Tom. Okay. Getting there. Uh, <laughs> now, now, before we wrap up, we have to get there. We have to get there. I think we, we okay. get there. Now, uh, the reason I, you know, because you you mentioned Ego Death Capital, Lynn Alden and Jeff Booth, you know, we've talked about Jeff Booth. I'm a huge fan of Jeff Booth, of course, because he, he I think he's, he's trying really hard to explain to people. Uh, I'm just paraphrasing really, you know, um, I think he, what he's tr also trying to say, you know, get out of the system, like, you know, you know, like, like, <laughs> uh, think in Bitcoin, you know, in terms also of, right. you know, right. In whatever unit of account or, or think Bitcoin, right. Not in fiat and the potential, like all the businesses or any projects you do think like, right. Of them outside and, and look at it from outside. And I think what he's also trying between the lines, I'm just you know trying to interpret right now is that, and I've had a lot of conversations, you know, discussions on, on this show and on everywhere privately, like people have a really hard time, Tom, right? Uh, imagining, let alone comprehending, not only what has been stolen from us individually and collectively as humanity within, let's just say, let's just stick in the last hundred years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you know, and considering and understanding for the first time, oh my God, we have these technologies out there. It's not some fucking sci-fi or conspiracy theory, which by the the term uh, has been coined and defined and you know established by FBI and CIA after the JFK assassination and stuff, just to you know debunk you and discredit you. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's like people have a really hard time imagining. Oh my God, this is the life. This is the existence. This, this is a civilization we could have right now, today, yesterday. Right? Would it be, you know, any kind of a technology? Would it be energy, healing, propulsion, uh, extending your life, or uh, traveling to space? I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, literally, screw Elon Musk. I mean, he's a military contractor, and he knows this stuff. I'm, 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 I'm betting on. I'm betting he knows this stuff. You know, all these things that Ashton forms, and a lot of people are trying scientifically, technologically, evidence based to talk about. You know. So this is the path. I think you also you you're trying. I think I think I, I have the sense that you are you know also uh, the intention of yours you know is to try to bring people to this point and like, okay, what are you going to do now, right? I mean, <laughs> right? What, what do you we seriously don't have to work anymore? This is this is the future. We uh, we could have right. Well, Right? You don't have to work. It's, it's the difference between having optionality. So abundance is optionality. Wealth is optionality. And when you get to do whatever you want with your time, that's the greatest form of wealth you can have. And Bitcoin provides that pathway for that for, for everyone, actually. It may not look that way, but I believe it truly is. Um, one thing that came to me through IO was this, that Graham Hancock, I'm sure you're familiar with Graham Hancock and his work, and he's had ayahuasca many, many times, and I've heard him speak. And one of his notions is that all the world leaders should at least take ayahuasca five times. But that we could solve a lot of the world. <laughs> I could talk about it, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I agree with that, except I disagree with who he speaks of. Exactly. But the actual leaders of the world are, the future leader of the world, and some of the current ones are actually Bitcoiners. So that's why Bitcoin and ayahuasca or Bitcoin and plant medicines are so important because we can do so much when we have greater connection to consciousness and when we have abundance that we can deploy, a capital that we can deploy into the world in a beneficial way, then it's our obligation to make sure that we deploy that capital in a way that is for the highest good of humanity and also just happens to be the highest good for the individual because the incentives are aligned. And so that we'll continue to build a better and better society that the Renaissance was happened when there was separation of church and state. The new Renaissance we're going into is the separation of state and money. And this Renaissance will be 10 to a hundred times fold what the Renaissance was then, because now we actually have some scary technologies like AI and whatever comes from AI, but those technologies can be for the greatest benefit of both earth and for humans. And that, we can get away from anti-human behavior and start having human flourishing on earth due to re-incentivizing our entire society. And things something like homesteading, having a wife, a, a husband, having some kids, this is hugely in the Bitcoin world, looking after your nutrition, your health, uh, getting sun, 
shout out to to Steven Luca. <laughs> and uh yeah, I, I think we can just create a better world. And we're just at the beginning. We're at the we're in the pioneering terms of Bitcoin. And we have a duty as Bitcoiners to figure out what's keeping us from that future and start knocking on those roadblocks to that future as quickly as possible. And we see it accelerating now. We're talking about it in the political realm now, right. political candidates talking about it. I don't expect much from them, but they've yeah. changed the recent window on the whole thing. So yeah. there it is. And it's still and it's, slow, to be honest with you. It's really, this is why you know I want to come back yeah. to this acceleration yeah. aspect, right? Because when you, I mean, for example, again, talking about Ben Davidson, I mean, he talks about like, it, optimistically speaking, he says, you know, uh, he's like totally generous. And it's like, you know, optimistically speaking, you know, by 2050, maybe beginning of 2050s, that's, and that's a very optimistic scenario. We're going to have a disaster, earth disaster cycle. And, and we are seeing it, right? I mean, the magnetic field of the earth has been, uh, uh, especially since 1850, you know, since the Carrington event and um, <laughs> decreasing I mean. faster and faster. So there is no way around it. Now, back to Bitcoin is that how do we accelerate this process? Because we want to, right? We want to harvest the fruits. We want to have the comfort, the abundance, the technological evolution, the spiritual evolution. So uh, this is my, this is, I think, my main concern. Like, how do we accelerate this process? I mean, we're talking about like a couple of decades, right? Maybe 30 yeah, and, maximum. And even the notion that we have to accelerate it may be flawed. That actually going at the pace it needs to go at is the right pace. And maybe that pace is being determined by Bitcoin, not by the humans. Interesting. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> And, and and if it goes faster, that may cause more devastation for humanity. Going slower may cause less. So the need to accelerate it, I don't know if that's actually a warranted need. I think the best, I mean, with number go up, I believe a uh, number of adoption goes up. So okay. that's what we see. Gotcha. So as that, as that goes up and as adoption goes up, then the technical difficulties we'll face are going to be more intense and layer two and layer three solutions will be needed to help accommodate all the different use cases of what Bitcoin can do. Right. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the the root causes, I mean, we're already living through these, you know, <laughs> um, uh, phases uh, and it's getting, right, it's getting worse and worse. And the pain point of, of uh, let's say, a, a critical mass of people, this is accelerating. And this, this in turn, uh, you know, will accelerate this process. I mean, I think there's no way, I mean, I, I know it sounds a little bit woo and esoteric, but I think this pro this whole process of you know the reduced magnetic field, the cosmic rays, and the increasing whatever you know uh, different strengths of magnetic gravitational fields that are impacting us. Do you think this is somehow you know with it being connection with our soul, with our DNA, with our information carrier, right? Uh, on a magnetic field basis, is it? Uh, do you have do you have like a understanding or perception or interpretation like what it could do to us individually and as humanity? If we had a Carrington event, which we were kind of close to not so long ago, it would be devastating to our technological society. And it would cause a lot of suffering. And there would be a reorganization of the way things happen, both in the supply chain and our daily lives and how people can get food, get electricity, get warmth, all those things. Um, it's going to take some human creativity to come out of that. We may lose a lot and have to rebuild some things. It's in Bitcoin. I'm not sure if it would bring it down. I know there's nodes inside of mountains in Switzerland. I know there's a node up in a satellite that Block has up in the, the, the sky. And I don't think there's a hard copy. Uh, but somebody somebody said this. We should have a hard copy of the the block chain, the time chain of, of the Bitcoin. So it's actually, if it all goes away and all the silicon chips don't work, if we actually had it printed on the paper, we could recreate Bitcoin from scratch off of paper. That's actually so, a pretty good idea. I mean, probably necessary. You know why? You because be everything will be obsolete, Tom. Everything. Everything. Will be everything. everything. I mean, and this... then we rebuild as a species, and then we figure it out. Because one great thing about our species is we're super flexible. Yeah. We're super super creative and we do best when we cooperate and i think that's what bitcoin does is it forms cooperation for all of humanity that we have a common good a common goal which is to protect the fruits of our labor our capital that we've actually donated to life it's no longer stolen from us that we actually get to hold on to it we pass it on to our children our grandchildren and our grandchildren's grandchildren and our current system prohibits that 
<laughs> all right. Um, all right. Uh, I think this is a lot to unpack and digest for a lot of people, a lot of layers. So yeah. um, let me give you like, um, let's, I'd love to, by the way, I'd love to get you back on, maybe even on a, oh, uh, maybe on. With, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of people who you might, we might just, you know, get in. Uh, yeah, it would be a beautiful on. complimentary discussion, I think. Um, but okay. what would you say? I mean, uh, do you want to like share anything with with my, you know, with our people listening, uh, you know, whatever yeah. Yeah. insights? I think of both tracks. I think if you're still learning about Bitcoin, please keep studying. If you're not a Bitcoin maxi yet, please keep studying and listen to maxis because it took me a while to figure it out, to figure out, oh, I want to be aligned with truth. I want to be aligned with the revolution that's happening for society, the positive revolution that's peaceful and doesn't require violence, that everybody adopts into Bitcoin so that everybody actually prospers and the bolts are lifted. If you're interested in plant medicines, I would say do more research, talk to people, um, and, and, and really educate yourself before embarking on any journeys with that to, to know what's going on with it and know the reasons why you want to do it as well. So actually look within and go, okay, why do I want to do this? And for what reasons? And I think if you do, uh, you can have a beautiful journey and experience in life and have a different understanding of the reality we live in. Beautiful said. Can any, any can people like, uh, like besides following you, like, is there any, like, I don't know, uh, do you books, newsletters, or I don't know anything? Yeah, we have we actually have a podcast. I'm in our podcast studio right now, and our podcast is called Wide Awake in Babylon. Awesome. With Chris Douglas, my friend. And it's usually two of us plus some other friends who are coming by, and we talk about consciousness, we talk about ayahuasca, plant medicines, and um, getting rid of this thing called the manufactured identity, this idea of ourselves. And once you get rid of it, then it comes up in a different way. So this is this constant ego death battle of figuring out exactly being who you actually are. So we have 58 episodes, about two to three hours each. So I'm going to put this on show notes, yeah, definitely. And then on, on Twitter, I'm Tom Tabor Hodl, H-O-D-L. So T-O-M-T-A-B-E-R-H-O-D-L. And I'm on Nostr, but not as active, but I want to become more active there because Nostr is the future as well. And shout out to Source Node, my friend, who's a big Nostr. And <laughs> to Ari, Ari Burr as well, a good, great, awesome uh, Nostr fellow as well. So. Yeah, um, those are good places to find us. We have a website that, that's up called Montaña Sagrado. So we have uh, 100 acres here in Colorado where we have uh, a ceremonial house and we hold like cacao ceremonies once a month and we have some other ceremonies that go on as well. So. Is it um, allowed? I mean, is it legal in Colorado? I watch it's not legal. So we hold cacao ceremonies, which is the plant that chocolate comes from and it's a heart opening plant medicine so we have a sound bath sound healing session here awesome and we okay. do that sort of thing here Beautiful. and then we take groups to the jungle to some curanderos we know in the jungle well, about twice a year for a 10-day experience there oh, so, okay yeah so you'd have to like uh, uh make an appointment uh, and book it like in advance like sometime or yes we're, we're, we're careful about who goes down there with us and stuff okay. so you reach out and if, if right. it's not the right thing we can help point you and maybe some directions to find more information well, Tom, appreciate really, uh, really appreciate from bottom of my heart, uh, you know, for sharing your, you know, insights and knowledge and wisdom, and hope really to get you back on and maybe, you know, in six months or so time. And thank you so much. Thank again. you, thank you, Kenyon. This has been a great honor. Appreciate oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Okay. okay bye. Thanks. Bye.